are beside the Eau Rouge River, which gives its name to the most legendary corner in motorsport. Welcome to Belgium and Spa-Francorchamps for the fifth round of the 2018 European Le Mans series. Now, while the weather forecast might be tricky, this penultimate race could be decisive for the championships. Let's find out. Six cars are battling for the GTE title. Proton Competition's new 88 Porsche leads the points, but the 66 JMW and 55 Spirit Race Ferraris are determined not to let the Porsche crew have the final word. Well, it's the first year with these cars. At the moment, it's, uh, but it's a very good car. We aim almost to do a first or a second position in the championship. We still have two races, we have to see. Car 66, it's really good. Car 55 as well is really good, so we have to see. I think it's a combination of tyres management, maybe wet, if it's wet it's better for us, I think that's all, and then a bit of luck. They have a very good lead driver in Caroli, and the rotors are both quick, but I think we have a chance against them, um, we just have to stay calm. They, they're quicker in a straight line, it seems, but that doesn't really matter here. Porsche is leading the championship, but Ferrari never give up. Spa is always a difficult uh, circuit to interpret for drivers, for the car, for the engineer, for, uh, to save tire, to save fuel. And so we have to take care of all these aspects. The Porsche is uh, fastest in the rain, but I think my engineer can understand uh, the condition of the track to find and choose the right moment and uh, to catch up with the Porsche. The LMP3 class remains wide open with 11 cars in the title race. RLR M Sport lead the championship, but the number three United Autosports car, a winner in Silverstone, is among their most dangerous rivals. Competition is tough. A lot of teams are really close behind us. United, they look strong but we don't need to forget about Euro International and Nielsen Racing. They've also got good lineups. I'm looking forward to it and yeah, I want to win this championship so we better get some good points here. But I think if you probably asked us after the first two rounds, I don't know if we'd be in this position, but uh, we've made good changes as the years gone on and, and Tony and Matt and I have, uh, have meshed well together, so it's been a strong second half so far. I think definitely we're a podium contender this weekend and I think we can get a win if we execute well in the pits and stuff like that. I like the rain. I think uh, actually as a rain lineup, Tony, Matt and I, I think are a very strong rain lineup, so rain or dry, I don't think it matters to us. Three wins from four races, the number 26 G-Drive Orica has dominated LMP2. A second place in Belgium will be enough to clinch the title. Racing Engineering and IDEX Sport number 28 seem to concede that they're now fighting for the runner-up spot. It's rare to achieve such domination in such a high-level championship and we really have to thank the team for all their hard work. As drivers we haven't made any on-track mistakes so we've carried on winning races and of course we're motivated to carry on winning. We know we've got a strong lineup. the car works really well, our WEC victory here in Spa this year is a real confidence booster. But the weekend might be difficult. The forecast is for rain, so I don't think it'll be easy at all. As far as the championship concerned, yeah, we've fallen behind. To be honest, although it's still possible, we're not really focusing on the title anymore. Here in Spa, our approach will be to avoid problems that we had in Silverstone, to make some improvements, because we're still a young team. On top of that, I guess it's going to be quite tricky for everyone with the weather, so we'll just have to see how it goes. The championship battle is, is very tight, especially with the racing engineering at this point in the in the season, so uh, we'll try to do our best. It's going to be tough, it's very good teams and drivers, and uh, we will see you on Sunday. Here we are 
are ready to play for the very first time the ELMS Wheel of Racing. And our candidates are three of our finest LMP2 drivers. Wheel of Racing! My name is Alex Cugno. I'm racing for Graf Racing, car number 39. And I'm going to kill those guys. Hello, my name is Anders Fjordvark. I'm racing for High Class Racing, Dala number 49. And I'm going to win this race. Hi, I'm James Allen, driver of the number 40 G-Drive Racing Orica. And I'm going to do my best and see what happens. OK, Alex, you're up first to spin the wheel of racing. How many slick tyres can be used on an LMP2 car over an ELMS weekend? So, if it's only tyres and not set of tyres, I would say 24. OK, well, the answer is 22. So you were close, just two out. You get two sets for free practice three sets for qualifying in the race and two additional tyres which you can use at any time. Oh no. Your question is, are you allowed to bring your pet into the ELMS paddock? Yes, I believe so. <gasps> the answer is no, I'm afraid. All right. James, it's your turn. Are you ready? Yep. Spin away. Who is the youngest LMP2 driver on the grid this weekend? Is it Phil Hansen? <gasps> correct! You are correct. Phil is just 19 years old. You get two points for that. Well done. Nice, thank you. Okay, spin away. European, oh, oh. Oh, tricky! <laughs> what is the nationality of Eduardo Freitas, the ELMS and WEC race director? Portuguese. Correct! Well done! <laughs> SOS. So you can choose any oh, of your opponents to help you to answer this question. All right. Who would you like to choose? I hope you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these Formula One world champions has never entered any kind of endurance racing? Your choices are Alan Prost, Jacques Villeneuve or Michael Schumacher. I don't know. I want to say Jacques Villeneuve. Yeah. Alright, we'll go with Villeneuve. Incorrect, I'm afraid, guys. Oh, again. <laughs> the answer was Prost. Villeneuve did Le Mans twice and Spa once with the Peugeot in 2007 and 2008. And Schumacher did the World Sports Car Championship with Sauber, Mercedes and Le Mans once in 1990. You ready? Spin the wheel. Which LMP2 team has clinched the most pole positions this season? Is it Panaspartha's competition? No, it's Edex Sport oh. with two pole positions in Le Castellet and Red Bull Ring. Never mind. So this is the final round and your final spin. SOS, who are you going to choose to help you with this one? You. All right. <laughs> so, how many horsepower has the LMP2 Gibson Technology V8 got? Do you know? Yes. You're sure? Yes. I'm quite sure, but not on that person. Okay. I would say 600. Correct. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. That's what we like. Your final spin. Yeah. Oh. oh, you have to miss your last turn. How disappointing is that? Yes. Your final spin. All right, let's go. It's endurance for your final... Oh, oh, oh no, it's, no, it's, it's changing its mind again. This wheel has a mind of its own. It's tricky. What does LMP2 stand for? Le Mans Prototype 2. Well done! That's another two points for you. Nice. Wheel of Racing! And our winner of the first ever Wheel of Racing here at Spa is James with four points. Well done. How do you feel? Oh, it's better than winning a race. It's just well, there you go. We're, we're glad we've made you happy already at this early point in the weekend. Thank <laughs> Congratulations you. Congratulations and thank you guys. <laughs> Wheel of Racing! Spa saw a world premiere with the first public track appearance of the Green GT LMPH2G, a zero emission hydrogen powered prototype. The future of racing may just have arrived. 
Hydrogen, this is just the beginning. We're already matching the performance of unleaded petrol cars. So, so far, it's very promising. The mileage that we've done so far really gives us a lot of confidence. Now then, we have to focus working on performance and reliability. It's amazing to see how reliable a hydrogen fuel cell is. So now we've got to really abuse it to learn more and to optimize all the systems. As weight is going to be a real issue always in racing, we have to work on that as well. It's not going to be easy, but we've got five years ahead of us and that should be enough. <laughs>
I'm sure we'll come back one day because we keep a very good relationship. So next year we will start Polrika as usual with the test plus the first round. Monza just the month after in May and in June we keep for Le Mans of course because the majority of the paddock has the chance to participate. And after that in July we will attend uh, Barcelona. Very end of August we will uh, visit with WEC Silverstone in UK. September back to Spa and uh, we will finish the season normally if everything is running well in Portimao for the final end of October. Fantastic, we can't wait. Enjoy the race. Thank you very much, you too, and be careful. It should be raining a lot today. I think so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Well, Matteo, it was a fantastic qualifying for you yesterday. Starting from pole, you're also championship leader, so I'm guessing today is all about extending that championship lead. As you can see today, we have uh, tricky conditions. Uh, I like to drive in, uh, in wet conditions, in tricky conditions, so it's going to be fun for everybody, but at the same time, it's only about surviving today. Actually, we have a great car. I mean, everything is running, uh, is running uh, good, so... We just need to keep on pushing and, uh, and hope for the best at the end of the race. Well, Matthew, it's another pole position for you guys, and, and pole positions this season don't seem to be too much of a problem, but it's converting it to that win. Is that the goal for today? Yes, this is the goal, but the conditions are crazy, and uh, for sure right now uh, the rain will go heavier and heavier normally, so we don't know, it's like a lottery. Uh, we, we have to see, normally we are strong under the rain uh, condition, but yeah, for sure we would like to have a victory uh, this season and uh, we, will, we, we will do all uh, our best to, to, to catch it. Best of luck. Thank you. Well, Roman, championship leaders, all you've got to do is stay out of trouble. That should be easy today, right? It's never easy, you know. It's raining. Uh, I just heard from race directors that their start will be under the safety car. It's a lot of standing water on the racetrack. We have Michelin, which is with a, with a very fast car next to us, you know, so it's still four hours to go. So we try to finish it and then we see. Everybody asks, oh, what's that? Uh, if you're going to do that, how much points? you uh, Come on, stop, guys. Uh, just let us enjoy this race. Enjoy the championship and enjoy the, the human relationship which we have with uh, my teammates you know so in the end of the day we're here for that yeah. Started the four hours of spa behind the safety car. We are under safety car procedures. I do remind everyone we are under safety car procedures. Race gets underway then. The clock has started and there's a little bit of a lull in the weather. Not perhaps that the drivers are really noticing it. The track is absolutely soaked. The forecast not great. G Drive on pole with Andrea Pizzatola in LMP2. LMP3 pole sitter Ultimates number 17 car, Jean Baptiste Le A. While Gianluca Roda starts on pole in GTE in the 88 Proton Competition Porsche. I remind you there is plenty of water on the curves and they should be very slippery like the grass. This is Eau Rouge, the river runs under it, but today the river runs across it as well. And there is standing water just about everywhere. Try to keep temperatures in tires and brakes. Keep temperatures in tires and brakes. Information to the pit line. Safety car instructed to go at his maximum speed. Safety car was requested now to go at his maximum speed. 
15 minutes behind the safety car and it looks as though we are building up speed, ready to start racing for real. So the safety car is coming in this lap. The track is now green. No overtaking before the finish line. All cars in line. Up towards the bus stop, Andrea Pizzatola leading for G-Drive, Phil Hansen second in the spray and the field disappearing in a wall of water behind them. So no overtaking before the start finish line, somebody already in the pit lane. Andrea Pizzatola blasts away at the start. Can Phil Hansen attack? That's all he can do to see where La Source is. He goes out wide. Nicolas Jamin, third for Duquesne. He goes out wide as well. Everybody desperate for some visibility in the grim, murky conditions. As soon as they pick up speed, a wall of water erupts and nobody can see a thing. And they now know they're plunging downhill at full racing speed for the first time into Eau Rouge, which they can barely even see. Dramatic stuff. Well, the car in the pit lane was fourth placed starter Paul Luc Chatin. Here's the IDEX Sport team. He's reported a problem with the left rear, so they're changing the wheel there. Gabriel Aubrey joining that team in place of Paul Lafargue, who's got back problems. Aubrey won at Silverstone for Jackie Chan DC Racing in LMP2. In the grim weather, no pole sitter has been displaced yet. The ultimate Norma leads in LMP3, the Proton Competition car, 88 leading in GTE. And in these conditions, it's hardly a surprise. If somebody in front makes a mistake, you'll get by. Otherwise, maybe not. Well, here is Phil Hansen being chased by Nicolas Jamin, the black and blue Duquesne engineering car, and closing in from behind, Gustavo Menezes for APR Rebellion. This is the battle for second. Hansen not confident, but down the inside comes Nicolas Jamin. So he moves up to second place as they sweep down through the left-handers at Pouan. And here comes Gustavo Menezes around the outside of Phil Hansen. So the American goes up to third for APR Rebellion. Nicolas Jamin, Gustavo Menezes, both pushing Phil Hansen down the order. Here's the race leader, Andrea Pizzatoli. Decent enough visibility, at least for a couple of laps till he's in traffic. And then Nicolas Jamin and Gustavo Menezes. Jamin on the curbs, he's going to lose traction there and he'll pay for that up the hill. And trouble, that is uh, Anders Fjordback in the 49 high-class racing entry. Missing his breaking point in the spray. Battle for second in LMP3. Jap van Oetert around the outside and Mattia Drudy cuts inside in the second part of the bus stop, but hasn't got the traction on the exit. Drudy on the curbs hasn't got the traction either. Drag race down to the right-hand hairpin at La Source. Looks as though Mattia Drudy has got the line. Jap van Oetert goes out wide. He's gonna try and cut back underneath and drive by his rival down the hill. Fantastic racing. In the GTE class, battle for second is on as well. The 88 Proton competition car ahead of 77, their teammates. But they've both been passed by the Ebi Motors Porsche of Ricardo Pera. So the number 80 car is out front. It is Porsche 123 in these grim conditions with the Crone Racing Ferrari close behind. Pizzatola trailing a rooster tail of spray up towards the bus stop chicane. Yet to catch traffic. It'll take a little longer in these conditions, even though the GTE cars are probably going respectively slower than they would have done. The prototypes possibly even more slowly. Norman Nato being chased by Nicola Lapierre. Nato, the red and yellow of racing engineering. He's in fifth place. Lapierre, the white dragon speed car with the blue stars stripes. He's in sixth spot, but he is closing. Down at La Source, the gap is down to a car's length. Norman Nato and Racing Engineering struggling. Anders Fjord back in the pits after the spin for the Dane. That was at Bruxelles. Oh, and trouble here. Phil Hansen being caught by Norman Nato. Nicolo Lapierre goes around the outside of Nato's red and yellow car. Konstantin Tereshenko in the AVF Argenvaez car. There, that is next up. So this is for fourth place. Hansen. Ahead of Nato, or ahead now of Lapierre, then Nato ahead of Tereshenko, and who's that in the spray behind? I think that's Felipe Nasser for Cetilavilova Corsa. 
So Hansen still fourth, Lapierre fifth, Nato sixth, Tereshenko, the red and white car in seventh, and NASA closing in from behind. The Brazilian, well, he raced in British F3, he won't be unused to this. Oh, around the outside, Nicolas Lapierre, he's got confidence in the grip of his Michelin wet weather tyres. Phil Hansen not quite so assured. Norman Nato under pressure from Tereshenko at the bus stop around the outside goes Felipe Nasa and that converts to the inside line. That's a classic spa move. Can he get the power down? Yes. Anders Fjordback, more trouble for the Dane. This is turning into a horrible race for him. Well, he's got back out of the gravel again. Here is the leader. Andrea Pizzatola, right with him now, is the Duquesne engineering car, number 29, Nicolas Jama. Well, Jama started well up on the grid and now taking the battle to Pizzatola. And Jama looks as though he's much more confident in the tyre. Look at that, straight around the inside. Didn't quite get the overlap done as they came out of Stavolo, the G-Drive car using the kerbs, but somehow finding the grip. Now they climb up the hill, racing with their foot firmly welded to the floorboards. Battle continues, and again, the Duquesne car, Nicolas Jama on the inside. And Andrea Pizzatola driving off the normal racing line, searching for the grip. That's the wet weather way. Stay off where the rubber and the oil normally is down, and it should be a little grippier. So quite often going the long way around the outside of a corner works. This time, though, the door is open. Nicolas Jamin sneaks through a pif paf, and there is a change for the lead for the first time. Just half an hour into the race. Uh, Roman Rusinov doesn't look too worried as his teammate loses the lead. There's still a lot of racing to go. Here's our LMP3 pole sister, Jean-Baptiste Lay, the number 17 Ultimate Motorsport car. Now in second place, six seconds behind Jop van Eitert in RLR M Sports number 15 car. Van Eitert pushing on. Jean-Baptiste Lay under pressure from behind as he comes into Piff Paff. There's a huge group of LMP3 cars. Oh, and Lay spins it up on the exit of the corner into the tyre barriers. And in the gloom, he is going to be hard to see. The team can't believe it. Their Norma is wrecked. And here's how. Car procedure deployed. We are under safety car. We are under safety car. Leader, car 29, slow down. Our GTE leader is Ricardo Pera in the Ebi Motors number 80 Porsche. He's had a great start to the race, but the safety car will reduce his lead gap. Porsche's 1-2-3 at the moment, though. Well, let's catch up with the ultimate team. Charlie George is down in their garage. What information do they have? Jean-Baptiste is OK. It's really easy to do a mistake in this condition. And uh, sometimes there is a lot of water, sometimes it's become uh, with less and less water. So lap, lap, lap after lap, the track condition is changing and uh, very easy to, to do a mistake. But the principle is that he is OK. And that is the main thing, especially when it's a family member. Second pit stop for Paul-Luc Chatin, the 28 IDEX sport car. And their race is coming unraveled fairly quickly. Now he's released as the pit lane starts to get a little busy, but struggling to get away. Gentlemen, close all the gaps to the safety car. I want to pick up some speed with the safety car. Clear up operations are concluded then, getting ready to head back to green flag racing. But the race director wants a nice orderly procession. Safety car at full speed, safety car at full speed. Charlie George is with the United Autosports team. Phil, we've been used to of late seeing you doing very long stints. You've obviously come in early. Is that to do with the conditions out there? Yeah, it is. We, we thought we'd put Philippe out there because there's no saying how long the race is going to go. Um, the conditions are quite changeable, they're quite variable. So um, right now, the biggest thing is visibility. So we thought we'd put Philippe in to try and get him out whilst the cross track's still quite bad. And if it, if it gets better, then put me out just to maximise his, his driving in the worst conditions. More trouble for the race director to think about. That's Jan Clare, the AT Racing Ligier, stopped on the driver's right halfway up the Kemmel straight. And he looks like he's out of the way. OK, at the moment, Norman, there is a car stop in Rouge and an MP3 stop in Rouge. So I think they will delay again. 
Nice weather for ducks. I'm not sure about flamingos though. Safety car in this lap. Safety car is coming in this lap. Track is green. No overtaking before the line. No overtaking before the line. Up to the bus stop come the leaders. Gustavo Menezes in third place. Mistake from Nicola Lapierre in fourth. He nearly loses that spot. Menezes in the pale blue and white APR Rebellion car all over the back of Andrea Pizzitola's number 26 G drive machine. Menezes goes out wide. Nicola Lapierre in fourth. And he's got Felipe Nasser's Cetila Villorba Corsa car right behind him, pushing hard. Here's the battle for second. Inside goes Gustavo Menezes on the curbs. Andrea Pizzatola, he'll lose traction there as they push on down towards Bruxelles and they both outbreak themselves. Bigger mistake from the G Drive car. The Rebellion car stays within the white lines but still stays in third. Down towards the double left hand as they go. And this is real tippy toey stuff. Behind the safety car, brakes will have been cold, tyres will have been cold. And they will be losing grip level, trying desperately to find some heat back in the tyres now. But to do that, you need to really lean on them hard. And in these conditions, that's very tricky indeed. Andrea Pizzitola, 26, just clinging on as Gustavo Menezes now runs out a little wide into Piff Paff. So he loses a bit of ground. And behind them, still Nico Lapierre in fourth. He's shaken off Felipe Nasser a little. The G-Drive car of Andrea Pizzatola is holding up Menezes and the leader is getting away. Menezes squirrelling off the kerbs. Battle further back. This is Hugo de Sadeler under pressure from Jonathan Hershey into Eau Rouge. The battle for eighth place. Brave stuff. Jonathan Hershey, the Graf Racing number 39 car, grabs the spot. Well handled by both men in trouble. Alexei Chuklin and Nick Jonsson in the Crone Racing Ferrari. And Chuklin in the Speed Factory prototype. Cut off the Ferrari's nose, stood on the brakes, and Jonsson had nowhere to go. Chuklin earns himself a drive through. LMP3 battle for fourth place. David Drew, number 19, M Racing YMR, with Antonin Borka for cool racing all over the back of him. Number four machine is right there. I'm sure the M Racing YMR car is struggling to see much out the front and almost nothing behind, but he must be aware of those headlights. Probably has no idea whom. Oh, that is trouble for James Dason, the number 12 Euro International car he shares with Andrea Dromedari. And that seems to be beached on the curbs. Battle for second place continues in LMP2. Gustavo Menezes on the inside again, exiting Piff Paff, and again they drift out of the corner side by side. Both struggling for traction. Andrea Pizzatola on the grass in the gravel. Yellow flags wave there. And that was why the number 12 Euro International car was in the way. Now he goes in the gravel as well. And Pizzatola on the wide outside line takes avoiding action when he sees the danger in the middle of the road as Menezes scoots up the inside. Nicolas Lapierre, third place now, ahead of the G-Drive car, which has dropped down to fourth after that gravel trapping rallycross excursion. And right behind is Felipe Nasser in the blue Cetila Villorba Corsa car. So this is a good cue. And actually with the G-Drive car there, it looks as though Nicola Lapierre is starting to pull away. Pizzatola off again, same place, down at the bottom of the circuit, goes off even further. Now can he find his own tyre tracks and go back through the compressed gravel? He does, but he loses more positions. Counted at least five cars going by and up the hill, another one, so that's six places lost. Now the United Auto Sports car can't quite get by on pace, or can it? Well, here's our race leader, Nicolas Jamin, for Duquesne Engineering. We are at the one hour mark of the four hours of Spa Francorchamps, and he is still out front. Gustavo Menezes in second place, 6.7 seconds behind, so Jamin does not need a safety car now, does he? And in third place is the Dragon Speed car of Nico Lapierre. Menezes appears through the gloom, catching the leader slowly. Jean-Eric Van, fueled, tired and ready to go at G-Drive. He heads off into the Merc. Nicolas Jamin in the pit lane as well. So the race leader is in for their first routine stop. As he's staying in, 
The door is open, but it looks as though he is just having a service and he will stay in. He knows the car, he knows the conditions. That's a good call by the team. Dragon Speed in as well as the pit lane gets busy. There's the 32 United Autosports car driver change going on there. And Ben Hanley is in for Nico Lapierre. There's Ben's yellow helmet. That car came in from what was third position before the pit stops. 27, Aurelien Panis, IDEC Sport car, the race leader at the moment, having yet to stop, runs out a little wide. Felipe Albuquerque is behind him in the number 22 United Autosports car. Now, Albuquerque took over early from Phil Hansen, don't forget, but the Portuguese relishing these conditions. G drives jean eric Van after the stops down in ninth place, the number 26 car, but a lot in front of him yet to stop. That should move him back up into the top three, potentially. In these conditions, Van should be absolutely flying. Battle in LMP3. This is Jop van Oetert. He's been caught by Antonin Borger, and Borger in the cool racing car goes through on the inside and then drifts out wide over the kerbs, loses traction. So Jop van Oetert judged the run out of Bruxelles a little better down into Pouin and he remains in the lead, but the battle is on, isn't it? And he runs out wide on the entry to the first element of Piff Paff. He loses traction now. Here comes Borger again, sliding the car off the corner, flashing the headlights, just in case, you know, that Van Oetert hadn't spotted him when he was door handle to door handle. Right behind them, Mattia Judy 11 and Scott Andrews in the number two United Autosports car. Andrews replacing Sean Rahal, the regular co-driver with John Falp, who's ill this weekend and can't race. Top of the hill at Lake Homme, Jean-Eric Van around a slower car, makes a mistake and takes to the runoff area. He's not the only one either. G-Drive car starting to work its way up the field around the outside of Jonathan Hershey's Graf Racing car number 39. That's a change for eighth place. And in the gloom up to La Source, here they come. Van on the outside. And that didn't work well for him. Didn't find the grip he thought was going to be there. Comes back on right in front of number 21, Ben Hanley. Lead battle in LMP3. Jop van Oetert, RLR M Sport still with Antonin Borger and Cool Racing's car coming down the inside. The number four machine, the blue and black car. Couldn't get through at Bruxelles. The problem is taking a tighter line means that you can't get on the power quite so early in the really limited grip conditions. And the driver who stays on the wider line often has the advantage. For the moment, Jop van Oetert hangs on to the LMP3 lead. Battle for third in GTE, Christian Reed 77 Proton Porsche inches ahead of the 55 Spirit Race Ferrari of Duncan Cameron. In the gloom to the bus stop, jean eric Verne attacking Konstantin Tereshenko, who's still in the AVF Formula car. That'll be a change for ninth if he can keep it on the island, and he does. And right behind Ben Hanley, the white car, look, squeezes by the Euro Interpol LMP3 car. And the Dragon Speed number 21 now attacking Konstantin Tereshenko. And he goes around the outside at Le Combe. So he is now up into 10th position and Tereshenko down to 11th. Yeah, normal, we should have the fuel alarm on this lap, so box this lap, box this lap, driver change. Not everybody has yet stopped. Norman Nato is in. Olivier Platt taking over the number 24 racing engineering car. There's Torito, the bad Toro on the front of the car. First year in the European Le Mans series. First year of sports car racing for racing engineering. It is getting gloomier and gloomier. Up towards the bus stop. Somebody's off. That's Christian Reed, And he comes back on. Ryan Cullen, the APR Rebellion Racing car, is the unfortunate victim. Jean-Eric Venn was just missed. Oh, it was Venn that swiped the Porsche off, trying to go underneath the APR car. Didn't leave enough room. Oh dear, Jean-Eric, that was not a good move at all. Ryan Cullen just passed the pit lane exit. Christian Reed managed to get in. He hadn't got knocked off too far. Vigorously waved yellows. 
incident involving car 77 under investigation. Christian Reed shakes his head as he looks at the damage to the car. Oh, he wants to kick something, doesn't he? Poor Ryan Cullen struggling back to the pits. Damage on the rear. He'll have no rear lights. That's going to make him really hard to see in the gloom as well. Felipe Albuquerque, the race leader, took over early from Phil Hansen to navigate through the worst of the conditions. They'll hope to put Hansen back in. Well, they have to put Hansen back in, but hope that the weather will be better when they need to. This is Martin Hipper for Inter Europol. He's off at last source. And what happens here? Oh, misjudgment maybe at the hairpin and then gets clattered by Alexei Chuklin, who's not having a great race. Jean-Eric Van for G-Drive Racing in third place. Maybe with a penalty hanging over his head after that incident where he shunted Christian Reed off the road. That really didn't look like the Porsche's fault. That'll all have to be sorted out in the wash. And he is trying to close down on the race leader, Felipe Albuquerque. Battle for fourth place on the outside. On the right of the picture is Ben Hanley. And he goes around Will Stevens in the Panis Bartes car. That's a change for fourth place up at Lake Comp. On board with Will Stevens in the 23 car. And I think Will Stevens caught out a little bit there in traffic. Didn't realise that one of the sets of headlamps coming up behind him or behind him was Ben Hanley's number 21 Dragon Speed car. Now he knows the danger though. He'll recognise the car and what he can see of it, but look at the weather. Information to the pit lane, stop and go penalty of two minutes to car 26 for causing a collision with car 77. Well, that was always coming, I'm afraid, wasn't it? Two innocent victims, one of whom, Ryan Cullen, with new bodywork on the car, is now stationary halfway up the Kemmel Strait. Safety car deployed, leader slow down. Ryan Cullen bails out. It hasn't been their race, I'm afraid. LMP3 leader Scott Andrews in the number two United Autosports car. Jop van Oetert in second place for RLR M Sport. So that battle worked out well for Scott Andrews. He managed to get through. He's built a lead, but as they catch the safety car queue, his rival will close right in from behind. Or will he? Jop van Oetert. Safety car is out, finds a huge puddle and gets a massive tank slapper on at Eau Rouge. Charlie George is with Ryan Cullen. Didn't really see a lot due to the weather and it kind of hit me from the side in the mid corner so I wasn't really sure who hit me or what, what happened. Um, all, I knew, all I remember is really just driving back, trying to keep the car in one piece to just bring it back to the pits. The team said bring it into the pits and I just missed the pit entry so I, I had to say I had to do another lap otherwise I was risking us getting a penalty to try and cut back through. Safety car remains out. A great job on the first stint. The pace was very good. Uh, it's good to get us to fourth position. I think you are quicker than uh, Will Stevens and you are pulling away from the car behind. Uh, we're still talking with race control for the conditions. We will let you know. Well, Scott, welcome to ELMS. You're in, of course, replacing Sean, who's unfortunately ill this weekend. How was that stint for you? That was one of the hardest stints I've ever had to do. You can't see literally from like 10 feet in front of you. It's crazy. Well, I only knew that about doing this race Monday evening. So I hopped on a plane. I live in Atlanta in, uh, in America. I hopped on a plane. I'm, I'm wearing Sean Rahal's suit and everything and just uh, got here. Yeah, never been here. So it'd be amazing if uh, if our boy Johnny can bring it home, that'd be awesome. Information to the pit line, red flag, red flag. All cars will stay in line behind the safety car. The safety car will start, will stop under the start light bridge. We are under red flag. Race director Eduardo Freitas left with no choice behind the safety car, tyre and brake temperatures dropping away, the weather getting ever more revolting. If there's no restart, half points will be awarded as they'd run less than 75% of the four hour race distance, but that would be enough to hand G-Drive the championship. Now we will have to see what the officials decide. Let's catch up with Charlie. 
This is a familiar face to many of you motorsport fans. To us, we know him as a co-owner of United Autosports. Zach Brown, for you guys, it would certainly suit you to call it game over at this point, um, leading P2 and P3. That would be a fantastic result for you guys. It would be a great result. I think the organizers did a good job uh, bringing the, the race forward. The weather looks like it's only going to get worse. Uh, all the drivers were saying the uh, conditions are dreadful. So uh, we'll see what they do here in about uh, 10 minutes, whether they intend to restart. But certainly if we finish where we are right now, it'd be, uh, it'd be a good day at the office. I'm not sure it makes a lot of sense to uh, restart if you're just going to end up red flagging it again. So uh, I'm sure they'll make the right call here shortly. They're all racers and nobody wants to pack up early, but safety of drivers and marshals is the paramount concern. And in the end, the organizers are left with no option. Red flag race will not be resumed. Victory then goes to the number 22 United Autosports car, Phil Hansen and Felipe Albuquerque. 14th only for G-Drive, but they clinch the LMP2 title. Victory in LMP3 for United Autosports 2 with the number two car, and Ebi Motors claim their first GTE win. A tough race for G-Drive, but enough to take a third team's championship in a row in the ELMS, and the driver's title also in the bag for Roman Rusinov and Andrea Pizzitola. Yeah, I'm very happy for the guys. It's been a fantastic season. I'm very proud of uh, you know being part of this team. I uh, didn't know them, and I've met uh, an incredible uh, team of, of person, engineers, mechanics, and uh, I couldn't be you know any happier. Obviously, we always want to win the race, but today it was uh, I think impossible to win. But uh, you know that's racing, uh, and uh, yeah. The only thing that matters is that we're champion. I like endurance racing. I love those cars. Yeah, I hope I can stay in there, in, uh, you know, for the future. Felipe Albuquerque and Phil Hansen claim their first win of the season in the number two United Autosports Ligier. I'm so happy. I mean, um, yeah, we fight so hard this year. Like things were not going right with us, but um, you know, with hard fight, and now all is believing on us. We did a mega qualifying, and today the race was chaotic for everyone, but still. Stick together with everyone, up and down, then the chaotic racing, just with the very dangerous, but I'm just so proud of everything, so great. Because there were only half points awarded, nobody can now catch G-Drive. The battle for second place will rage in the final encounter of the season between racing engineering, iDeck and Dragon Speed. Dragon Speed claiming their second runner-up spot in a row. Panis Bartes taking third in LMP2, their best result of the season so far. In LMP3, John Falp and new boy Scott Andrews make it a double win for United. That was a crazy race, but I mean, you know, Scott just nailed it. And uh, I mean, he just drove the wheels off that thing. After I got in the car and realized how treacherous it was, I mean, it was uh, it was coming down hard and you couldn't see much of anything. So, I mean, hats off to those guys and hats off to Scott for uh, pushing this car to the front and uh, securing us a win. We're super pumped. You couldn't ask for anything better on your debut. That's awesome. Um, you know, just a huge thanks to the team. Uh, they gave me the car to do it. Gary, the engineer, awesome strategy. Just thanks to John for having me on board. And, you know, I, I wish Sean could be here, but uh, yeah, this is pretty sweet. Second place in Spa, a strong result for championship leaders RLR M Sport. They'll head into the final race with a 14 point advantage over 360 racing. But from third to fifth in the standings, three other teams will also be chasing the LMP3 title. John Falb and Scott Andrews win. Jop van Oetik, John Ferrano, Rob Garafall in second. Terence Woodward, Ross Kaiser, and James Swift third. Victory in GTE for Ebi Motors, third on the grid behind the Proton Competition Porsches, but they ended up on top of the pile. Yeah, it has been a very good race. And then we are lucky and uh, the race stopped, so we are first and it is the first win uh, for Ebi Motors. I'm very happy. Third in Spa, the 88 Proton Competition Porsche keeps the upper hand and they head to Portugal for the final race next month with an 11 and a half point margin. Ricardo Pira, Fabio Bibini and Brett Curtis, the winners from Aaron Scott, Duncan Cameron and Matt Griffin's Ferrari with Matteo Cairoli and Giorgio and Gianluca Roda in third. Yo, check this out. 
so what about the best passes in the gloom then? Our first is in the battle for fourth, just before Campus Corner. Nico Lapierre taking the outside line, breaking later than Phil Hansen's United car and finding just enough grip around the outside to get in front of his rival. Heading up to Pif Paf, pole sitter Andrea Pizzitola defending the lead, but the dark car of Nicolas Germain just too quick for him. The orange G-Drive car heads a little bit wide, the door is open, and Nicolas Germain needs no further invitation. He pounces and grabs the lead. Eau Rouge is a thrilling enough corner in the dry. In the wet, Jonathan Hershey passing Hugo de Sadelaire. This required precision and confidence from both men. Our LMP2 champions have been crowned, but the season finale in Portimao will be the decider for LMP3 and GTE. Four hours of Portimao. Mm -hmm.